Hi everyone, this is a week 8 lecture on the reading Discovering Desistance. Uh, so we'll be talking about what exactly desistance is. We'll be talking about uh, Irving Goffman and his concept of stigma. We'll then be talking about Moffat and the concept and what uh, their conversation regards to age is. And we'll also be talking about our discussion prompt. So first of all, what is desistance? Uh, desistance or is stopping uh, a crime, stopping to commit crimes. So uh, we often think of certain people as being criminals, right? Well, the big question is uh, what does it mean when criminals stop being criminals? Why do they stop being criminals? Uh, why do people stop being criminals? Um, this is a major conversation regarding criminology because uh, if people stop being criminals and we can figure out what stops them from being criminals then we can cause the crime rate to go down hypothetically right and we talk about recidivism a lot uh, when we are looking at criminological theory well and we'd say oh 60 percent recidivism rate that's so terrible that's so high 60 percent of the population are going to prison and then when they get out of prison, they go back to prison. Well, we forget that 40% of the people that get out of prison desist. 40% of criminals stop. And that's a big deal. Um, you know, our prison system is pretty terrible at reforming people. But 40% of them, regardless, do reform and do become members of society again. And that's a big deal that we often overlook only because that 60% is higher. So let's talk about Goffman and stigma. Stigma is a label society puts on a given category of people that marks that group of people as uh, less than, than uh, the rest of society. And stigma, uh, a common term we often use for these are stereotypes. A stigma is more of a collection of stereotypes. So here are some stereotypes associated with stigma. Uh, so a racist stereotype is that black people are lazy. Um, there are other uh, stereotypes that go with uh, along racial lines, not just against African Americans, but all groups. Um, but that entire collection of stereotypes goes along with uh, stigma against black people. Gay people have AIDS. Uh, I, sorry, AIDS should be all capital letters. Uh, so gay people have AIDS or gay people, you know, are really promiscuous or any of those stereotypes. Those all congregate uh, to uh, be uh, stigma against gay people. Similarly, uh, criminals are inherently untrustworthy even if they've done their time or, you know, you can't change a criminal. Those are stigmas that go against people who have been convicted of criminal uh, doings. Uh, so one thing to go into this to consider is how does criminal stigma impact desistance? If a heavy enough stigma is put on someone that every person that interacts with them treats them as if they're an untrustworthy criminal, that might uh, inhibit their ability to desist. Put another way, if someone's labeled as a criminal, they might be more likely to um, commit more crimes. Now let's look at uh, what Moffat has to say. So Moffat identifies two types of criminals. Uh, we have criminal, we have adolescents limited criminals and life course persistent criminals. So those adolescent limited criminals are people who commit crime as part of coming of age, uh, growing pains, if you will, or learning what the limits of society are. Uh, and this is a, gr a definite group of people. Um, so many sociologists would say if we ex accept that deviance is common and everyone's committed acts of deviance, then adolescent limited criminals are probably the majority of us, of everyone. Uh, life course persistent criminals, though, are those who commit crimes during their entire lives. So uh, somebody uh, that is committing crimes into their 60s, 70s, and 80s, and then, you know, commits a crime a week or so before they die. Those are life course persistent criminals. 
um, Moffat argues that most people stop criminal activity as they age. Uh, the majority of people are stopping criminal activity after they get past that adolescence limited period. So the um, being y young, you know, upstart kind of a punkish kid. Uh, and then as we get older, we realize, oh, maybe we shouldn't be doing these things. Oh, maybe we can get in trouble. Um, and thus, most criminals uh, are of that adolescence limited type, and very few of them are of the life course persistent type. Um, Moffat then also says that individual self-concept is key to determining the systems. So, and this comes into play uh, with uh, the uh, maturation, his maturation hypothesis. So if they can uh, get over uh, the labeling of the person as being um, a criminal, if the convicted criminal can not think of someone that has committed a crime as opposed to a criminal, uh, then they can put that crime behind them. And that is where uh, desistance comes from. Uh, the criminal, the person who's been labeled as a criminal, who's able to reform, Moffat would argue, is the person who's able to think of themselves as someone who's committed criminal acts, but isn't a criminal anymore. Now let's talk about our discussion. Uh, so Moffat identifies two types of criminal offenders. Uh, tell me what are the two specific terms uh, that she uses to define these types? Talk about which type do you think can you identify as being more common? And how might the identification of these types influence uh, criminal sentencing? Uh, would one type or the other, should one type or the other get longer criminal sentences? Uh, tips for this is to be sure to fully explain each of Moffitt's terms in your answer. You might find that helpful in re-listening to this discussion, this uh, lecture possibly, uh, certainly in your readings. And of course, as always, follow the standard discussion requirements uh, laid out uh, earlier in this course. As with everything, if you have any questions in this regard, please let me know. And I look forward uh, to our conversation.